Welcome to Airborne Flight Training, coming up on this week's episode. Changes to Airman Knowledge Test and PHAK announced. Pan Am Academy acquires 737 MAX 8 SIM. USAF probes English language training of foreign pilots. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Changes to Airman Knowledge Test and PHAK announced. The FAA's Airman Testing Division has disclosed it has been working in cooperation with its testing vendor, PSI Services, to scientifically assess existing FAA Airman Knowledge Tests. Assessments of private pilot airplane and commercial pilot airplane knowledge tests have been completed. While the subject matter of the aforementioned test will not be modified, changes will be made to test questions for purpose of ensuring they align with current Airman certification standards and reference existing FAA handbooks. The assessments of the tests have resulted also in reductions to the times allotted for completion of the exams. Beginning April 24th, the private pilot airplane test time will be reduced from 150 minutes to 120 minutes, and the commercial pilot airplane test time will be reduced from 180 minutes to 150 minutes. Additionally, five unscored validation questions will be added to each test, thereby increasing the private pilot test from 60 to 65 questions and the commercial pilot test from 100 to 105 questions. Unscored questions will not count toward the test score. What's more, the FAA has published Addendum C to its Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge. The addendum addresses the NTSB Safety Recommendation A14-109, which prevails upon the FAA to clarify PHAK content pertaining to attitude indicator pitch and bank limitations. And after the break, EAA International Young Eagles Day slated for June 10th. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. EAA International Young Eagles Day slated for June 10th. The 30th annual International Young Eagles Day will be held on June 10, 2023. The yearly event is undertaken to encourage all EAA members and chapters to participate in the Young Eagles program. In EAA parlance, Young Eagles are children ages 8 to 17 who are taken aloft in the personal aircraft of EAA members that they may experience the joys and wonders of flight often for the first time in their young lives. The flights are most often round-robin affairs, departing from and returning to the same local airport. Textron names Top Hawk participants. Every year, Textron embarks on the Top Hawk program, giving a special factory new custom colored Skyhawk to a handful of flight programs as promotional aids and recruiting aircraft. This year, participants include the Yellow Jacket Flying Club of Chambly, Georgia, Utah State University in Logan, Utah, Flight Training Professionals of Orlando, Florida, Great Basin Aviation of Reno, Nevada, and Anson Aviation of Sugarland, Texas. The Skyhawks, sadly, are only provided for the duration of the program, as lovely as a brand new aircraft for free would be. George Charles Allen named Royal Aeronautical Society Fellow The Royal Aeronautical Society, a London, UK-based institution dedicated to advancing the aviation, aerospace, and space sectors, announced that Mr. George Charles Allen has been elected to the station of Fellow of the Royal Aeronautical Society. Fellow is the highest grade attainable within the society and is awarded solely to individuals who have made outstanding contributions, attained positions of high responsibility, and demonstrated consistently high qualities of work and character in the profession of aeronautics. AEA new product introductions and more to be livecast next week. We're getting ready to shake up the avionics world for the 15th year in a row with over 30 new product introductions as part of our valued partnership with the Aircraft Electronics Association. Next week, ANN will be livecasting a dozen hours of live avionics news from the AEA convention and trade show in Orlando, Florida. The excitement starts on day one, April 24th at 8.30 Eastern, and the opening sessions of the show, followed by the ever-exciting NPI presentations, which should be done by shortly afternoon. 
Live in-depth interviews from the convention floor start with Tuesday's programming at 1300 Eastern and Wednesday's program starting at 1100 Eastern. All of our live programs can be found at airborne-live.net. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Pan Am Academy acquires 737 MAX 8 SIM. Pan Am Flight Academy just obtained a new Level D B737 MAX 8 simulator to enhance its commercial pilot training offerings. The MAX 8 allows the school to provide up-to-date training with a state-of-the-art simulator and should be ready for student use by July. Like many of the simulators in Pan Am's collection, the Level D MAX 8 is equipped with all the needful to provide consistent, realistic, true-to-life pilot training for the same aircraft rolling off the Boeing assembly line. The sim uses the most recent L3 Harris Reality 7 technology with inbuilt avionics and systems of a production aircraft. The MAX 8 will allow students to acquaint themselves and build proficiency with runway awareness and advisory system, TCAS 27.1, weather radar, electric control loading and motion system, and RSI Epic Visual Systems. Jeff Portanova, president of Pan Am Flight Academy, said, quote, We are excited to add the B737 MAX 8 simulator to our fleet of training devices. This new simulator is a significant investment in our training programs and will provide our students with the highest quality training experience, end quote. And after these messages, USAF probes English language training of foreign pilots. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, Factory Connected. Welcome back. USAF probes English language training of foreign pilots. On February 19, 2021, a Japanese Air Force pilot and his American instructor perished when the T-38C Falcon, in which the pair were conducting a cross-country training flight, crashed during a VFR approach to Alabama's Montgomery Regional Airport. Comes now 2023 and U.S. military aviation officials are evaluating the effectiveness and possible culpability of a U.S.-run program by which foreign aviators are taught ostensibly to speak, read, and communicate in the English language. Personnel of the U.S. Air Force's Aviation Safety Division are currently looking into the quality of the instruction provided by the USAF-led Defense Language Institute's English Language Center. A Texas institution to which pilot training units from across the U.S. and around the globe send students to brush up on aviation's worldwide official language, English. The Lost T-38 was flown by Captain Renshi Usaki, a Japanese Air Self-Defense Force student pilot under the auspices of instructor pilot Scott Ames Jr., age 24, of Pekin, Indiana. An aviator, the USAF's official report on the accident characterized as having, quote, a reputation as one of the best and hardest working instructor pilots at the Flying Training Squadron, end quote. The report further states that Ames was, quote, respected by his leadership and fellow instructors and had great rapport with his students, end quote. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.